say no. We need to do approve the minutes from last meeting. So moved. Got a motion. Go ahead, second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I think we got two new members <laughs> on the committee, and we got one that hadn't made it here yet. So if you got any questions, we got uh, Commissioner Gooch, Commissioner Ball, Commissioner Cook, um, veterans on this committee. They can get you the answer. They can get you the answer quick. So, and of course, you can always go to the mayor's office. He's got all everything all being laid out in there. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, first on the agenda is update on sulfur on surplus property sale. Good evening. Good evening. And everybody a little packet. Uh, the Excel spreadsheet on the top is kind of color coded. Green means we've sold it. Yellow means it's in the process or being advertised, publicized to be sold, and the red means it's kind of in limbo right now, we're waiting, it's inactive. Mm -hmm. There's one piece of property I'd like to bring attention to that's on Dismal Hollow Road. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had an offer of $2,000 on that. If you look at the other information in that packet, uh, what's highlighted in blue on that map is the, is the approximately four acres that we're attempting to sell. It has, it's landlocked, it has no access, it doesn't have any sewer, electricity, gas, uh, et cetera. Is adjacent to the person who who has made an offer on this property. At one point in time, the four acres we're attempting to sell was in his deed. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little more information in there about this particular piece of property, but the, the offer is for two thousand dollars. And at this time, that's the only offer we've had. We've been trying to sell this property since March. I'd just like to ask your permission to uh, go ahead and accept this guy's offer. And his offer is also included in there. All right. May I ask a question? Sure. How did the deed? What What was the the uh, fuzziness in the deed that all of a sudden? That's, that's is a that good. a long Is that a long answer, man? <laughs> it's It's a long. We, we don't know. Oh, we don't know. Okay. He, he thought he so many years that uh, we don't know what who did what to. Mm -hmm. okay. But it's. So it was his at one time, and he thought it was his. He, when he bought the property, he thought he was buying 24 acres. Okay. It was in the deed that he was looking at. Okay. When, when the deed was was prepared for him to sign, it was 20 acres. Uh, okay. It had been quick claimed at some point of four acres to yeah. somebody that had, had, had originally owned the whole 24. Right. Okay. No other no other neighbors have shown interest in. Contacted them all several times. Okay. Is it the blue area or the, the black? The blue area is what we're trying to sell. Okay. About four acres. Is the black what he owns? The black is what he owns. That's 20 acres. Yes, sir. Okay. See, we have to do no man's land right now. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can't get to it from anywhere. You just went through the process of trying to sell it as a delinquent piece of property, along with some others. We got no bids mm -hmm. on this property. I've received none since then either. Who's been paying taxes on it? All no, these no one. <laughs> no one. It's just For been... a number of years. Yeah. But you see, you, I think we told you previously that a state statute, the way it's written, we have to get at least recover the property taxes, the penalty interest, and other charges, unless we're un unsuccessful and unable to get an additional bid. Then we can come to property management take this through the commission and you can grant permission for us to sell it for whatever price we have deemed is doable. And in this case, we're getting our, just the recovery of our property taxes. We're not recovering interest costs, et cetera, but we are getting our property taxes a return and that's, that's the only bid that we've got and I don't think we're gonna likely get another one. All right, does this cost column that shows approximately a $6,800 bill is that accrued uh, in interest or, or interest back penalties, penalties advertising so it's not we're not really out that money that's no, just sure. paper money on paper money okay, okay. perfect right. see your back tax column there yes ma'am 1939 yeah. and then we've been offered 2000 right so we're breaking even yeah that's about it yes ma'am i make a motion oh, we motion to to, to accept 
to sell in the 2000 unless somebody comes in and offers a million. I second. Got a second. Any more discussion? Yeah, we can get it back on the tax roll, wouldn't you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. My call the Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Kaplan? Here. <laughs> 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 two for two. <laughs> Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner McAdoo? Yes. <laughs> Just to bring us to Jeff Bush out of my max. I'm going to bring it over. Okay. I'm going to feel others that were. On, on the other four that are highlighted in amber, uh, two I've sent out as mailers to the people who have adjoining property, basically explain the situation and say we're willing to accept any reasonable offer on the property. Uh, the other two, um, when it says advertised by October 24th, I have those uh, posted on the web, on a web service, and we get daily hits on those particular pieces of property, getting about about 15 or 20 per day on those, so people are looking at them. And, I, and I reason, the reason we did it that way is those two particular pieces of property do have some type of, potentially some type of commercial value. The one on Baker Road uh, and uh, the one on uh, Claude Jones Road. Any questions? But those, uh, one on Baker Road has already been through the delinquent property tax sale process, no bidders. So we're now out trying to get our, make our best effort to get a bid somehow. So then when we get that, like the one you just voted on, that'll come back to you for your approval if you think we've gotten the best deal we can. So that property on Baker Road is it close to the primary school? I, I want to say, I can't remember what primary school, but it, it does go to Stewart's Creek uh, Middle and, and High School. But it's, it's in... There are other houses around this lot oh, okay. in, a, in a subdivision. So it's a it, may, it may have value. We just haven't been able to get okay. anybody to it's express a interest. Quarter lot on Baker and Anderson Road and across the street from that. Very nice homes. Okay. What, what is the red inactive? How do you define inactive? Inactive. Um, for the ones on the Lytle Road and Windsor Road, there's some legal issues about, uh, concerning those two pieces of property, and we're waiting for those to get fully solved before we go forward with advertising them. And the one on Coleman Hill Road is just going to be a little bit more of a challenge to sell, okay. uh, and so just trying to come up with a good game plan there. That one on Coleman Road, can he come up before? Uh, no, we, we talked about it last year. We haven't tried to sell that. that piece of property was gifted over to us some few years ago and it's uh, maybe that's what I remember it has, something about COVID it has a nominal value but we're trying to find a way to dispose of that in some way and put it back on the tax roll any more questions thank you uh, next update on renovation of DMS administration building <coughs> Okay, those of you that have been on the committee know that we have received a piece of property that uh, Stonecrest Hospital surplus, and it was the original Pace, you know, wellness building they had over there. Okay, and that's right. That property is right adjacent to our ambulance station on uh, Burton Street. Okay, so. They've given that piece of property over to us and what our plans were, and those three or four of you that have been on the committee know that we we're wanting to, and we had got approval to actually do some renovation and work in that building and move our administrative offices for the ambulance uh, department into this PACE building. And once that's done, the building that we're in, which is a converted house, is our ambulance station right now, that building would be taken down after we build a new ambulance station right there at the same location. We have enough property to do that. Okay, so that's been the plan that's been in place and it's already been through the process. Not this current fiscal year, but previous fiscal year, we, in the uh, ambulance department's budget itself, we budgeted $250,000 for this rehab work, okay? So that's, are been set aside as a capital 
uh, improvement number, but you have on your iPad there, you can see we finally have got the plans and et cetera redrawn here to rehab and, and renovate that building. And the dollar amount is about 350,000 as opposed to 250,000. So what we want you to do is give permission for us to spend another 100,000. We haven't taken bids on this actually yet. We, but this is just an estimate right now from our architect that has drawn these plans to convert that to a, an administration building for us. We need permission to go ahead and proceed with this. So we need to, and I think we put a, thank you, did we put a um, budget amendment in here? Let there me see. There is a budget amendment. There is a budget amendment. The first thing on there is just to detail a couple of pages there whereby the architect has gone through the whole process of evaluating and giving us an estimate. And the total estimate on the construction uh, plus the architectural fee and, and some miscellaneous printing, et cetera, is $347,904. So I've just rounded that up to $350,000. We've already got $250,000 set aside in our capital budget. It's already there from last year, not this year's budget. And we need a uh, permission to spend again another 100000 which would put us up to $350,000 total for that budget. And you can see the next item is, is the budget amendment for $100,000 to come out of the ambulance fund. We have that ambulance fund separated now, Mr. Johnson. It's in its own little budget area, so it has its own uh, ending fund balance, you might say. So we're going to take $100,000 out of their $1.8 million ending fund balance to, uh, to uh, hopefully complete that renovation of that of that building for administration purposes. You're ultimately transferring that money uh, out of ambulance fund into right. the fund. Uh, we'll use it only if we need. Yeah. We hope that we don't need so that 350, but, and I hope that's enough, but we won't know until we take bids, which will be in a few weeks. Well, I've been in that building down there, and it's in dire need of some renovation for, for the administrative <laughs> office. It's, 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 just, old house. it's just a small, yeah. old house. You sure? That, where they are now. Where they are now, yes, ma'am. They've been there for years. For years, that's right. So it's, and they're using, they have two ambulances parked in two double garages, and you have to be an expert driver to even back them in there. <laughs> May I ask a question? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, how old is this original estimate that's... This, this current, right, this, yeah, the, the, this is just days old. Okay. We just so, got that estimate just a few days ago. You're talking about the, the, the estimate for the need of the additional 100000 Yes, that, that 347000 Okay, my, my question is... Who, who put the original estimate together that was okay. $100,000? The mayor short. pulled that number out of the air he did. about two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> this okay. was when we were talking, when the hospital we need was, to start <laughs> was talking about us giving us that yeah. old building, which yeah. they have now done. Yeah. But that was just an estimate okay. without any input okay. from an, yeah, an architect or an engineer. Okay. In, other words, <coughs> in other words, we needed a starting point. Sure. <laughs> Is this a project that the PBA would be turned over to? to no, it's, it's small enough that we won't do okay. that. We'll manage that ourselves. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any more questions? Just so I understand, um, you ask, we, we get the increase approved before we accept the bids. What's the reasoning for that? Well, I, I don't want to go through all this process unless you, unless I'm pretty reasonably sure that you guys are going to allow us to uh, <laughs> accept the bids and spend the, the, the money, et cetera. So. And once we have the bids, we'll still have to come back and... Yeah, if the bids, now if the bids come in at anything under 350, I don't have to come back for any more will. The purchasing committee can then accept the bids, okay? But. Uh, But the commission sort of wants to know in advance how many dollars we're potentially going to spend before we <coughs> indicate that we're going to make a commitment. Okay. <coughs> you need a motion, Mr. Chair? Uh, any more questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I move that we proceed with this. Is a motion? Got a budget. Oh. I hear a second. I'll second. Got a second. Any more discussion? Do what you're saying. Come on, Commissioner Cook. Cook. Okay. Oh, either way. <laughs> you can take credit. She took it from me. <laughs> Becky, the, the motion is to 
Except the budget amendment. Yes. Right. Correct. 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 Okay. Any more discussion? Not calling on. Commissioner Baum? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Kaplan? Yes. Commissioner Cush? Yes. Commissioner McAdoo? Yes. And just those of you that are mute, this same request will have to go to the budget committee. And if it gets their permission or their approval, then it'll come back to the commission. So it's got two more bites at the apple before it's officially done. <laughs> This is the starting point. Yeah, yeah the starting yeah. point. <laughs> right now. Well, on this worksheet here, we got 250000 Already? Uh -huh. Yeah, we already have that. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. That's what I'm telling you. We had that two fifty from previous fiscal year and we still need to set aside for that okay. purpose. We've already done that. So she's new on this worksheet here, down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see it? Mm -hmm. Uh, next on the agenda is update on judicial. Okay. I mean, this is just an opportunity for you to ask questions in the meeting. Sorry, update some of you that haven't heard all of this story a few times. But we're in the process working with the PBA. The PBA is a public building authority. It's a, it's a body that's appointed by the by the commission. But in any event. Um, they have helped us over time, and Mr. Cush, you might have been on that group at one point in history. I don't remember four, when. Four or five years or more. Yeah. That some of our more difficult projects that takes a lot of coordination, they, they help us, and most of those people on there are either architects, engineers, or some people have had some experience in uh, construction. So this is really a complex project. Uh, it's a very expensive project, and it will be uh, a total cost of probably a little bit of an, an excess, maybe of seventy million dollars when we get through with the judicial building and the and the parking garage. And it's a bit of an update for some of you that weren't here. We've actually purchased, concluded the purchase of the D and J property, that half of a block, uh, on August the fifteenth. So we own that now. And that will be where our parking garage goes. And then the building where that's east across the street from the county clerk's building is, is where the judicial building will go. This goes back, the history of this is 10 or 15 years old. Okay, so we're now, for the first time, maybe have some reasonable possibility of making this happen. And so I'll tell you what we've done, what the PBA has done uh, in the last several months. And there are a lot of moving pieces here and a lot of members on this team. <clears throat> but, and over the course of time, we've had a, a consultant group that's studied this and interviewed all the users and vested people that have an interest here. You know, the users of the property, the clerks and the judges and, and all of those folks. And they have sort of given us a, a good, sound foundational overview of how many square feet it's going to take and what the courtroom should look like and what the secu security fundamentally should include, et cetera, all of those things. And that's been done before I got here once or twice. It's been done again since I've been here, okay? And though that group of people are what we call our programmatic advisors. In other words, they're going to help us hold uh, our, all of the other people accountable that we don't overbuild what we need to build, okay? So the PBA has continued, they've engaged them. The PBA has a lot of authority. They can, they can hire the programmatic advisor, they can hire the project manager, they can hire the architect and engineer. Okay, we have vested them by statute, they have this authority to act on our behalf. Okay, and we've chosen to use them because it's a complicated problem, uh, project. We need everybody together helping as much as we can. All right, what they have done, they. They put out what we call RF uh, Qs for a project manager team, and they put out RF Qs for a architect engineering design team. The project manager, they had five applicants, and they chose to interview, I believe, 
three of those and they've picked that project manager. So that person is in place. They picked that person, uh, that team first so that they could help with the selection of the architectural engineering process. And they had 11 applicants for that. And they created a short list of five of those firms. They interviewed all of those five firms on September the 15th and they've chosen uh, well, our Grisham Smith Architects out of Nashville, which is a very solid, long-standing firm. The project manager is a company called Pinnacle Partners, and it's just a small firm with three or four folks. Uh, the, one of the primary principals in that little firm worked for many, many, many years overseeing the construction and development of the Board of Regents projects. So that's who the project manager is, and. Uh, they have an agreement already worked out with the project man manager. They are working with Grisham Smith to find terms that they can agree on as far as the contractual terms on how their fee and et cetera is going to be structured. Okay, so we've got, um, I forget, how many dollars have we already got approved? Trade Seven million. Five, does it, for the, uh, Design fee. No, $5 million, I think. Yeah. We've got $5 million already appropriated by the commission. But I thought it was and, a total of $7 million. Well, that's just going to take care of the design phase yeah. of this, okay? Mm -hmm. We have no money for construction except maybe some demolition of the uh, uh, some of the properties as we get to there. But we spent $650,000, I think, for the DNJ building. So all of this design work adds up to mega dollars when you put all of these folks together and the size of this project. So that's sort of where we are. As soon as they get this agreement worked out with Grisham Smith, the actual design will start. There is a design committee. When we, when we agreed to, to allow the PBA to do this, we put a couple of things in there that we wanted them to use. One is a uh, design review committee, which is made up of our, of our users. And then once the construction gets going, there's a smaller group of folks that'll be the sort of overseeing the construction, working with the PBA and all these other entities on the construction oversight. And the first person on, one of the people on the design review committee is your chairperson or his designee. He can pick one of you to be involved in, you know, some more detailed review of what's going on and just sort of a third or fourth and fifth, sixth set of eyes to see what we're doing and see if you think it's the right, the right thing to do for this whole building and how it's going to fit with our whole downtown, uh, I guess you could say compatibility, et cetera. So, but we've got basically eight people on that little committee in addition to all these other folks I've already told you about. The chairman of the PBA or his designee the county mayor or my designee, the circuit court clerk or her designee. I've already told you the programmatic advisor, the property management committee chairman, I've already mentioned that, or his designee, um, the project manager who is Pinnacle Partners, and the sheriff or his designee, and the presiding judge or his designee. So we'll have hopefully a pretty wide range of people that are participating and helping us really get the best product out of this whole process that we possibly can. Is that the, those people you list, is that the design review committee? Mm -hmm. So is the design review committee who will decide what the building looks like as far as how many <coughs> floors? And it, eventually, yes, they will have substantial input into that. You know, the design, Gresham Smith and his team of folks will bring forth options and okay. suggestions. And then at some point, these folks working together will have, along with our project managers and, and so forth, who have a lot of experience in this, and this design team will, will come to some consensus, and then we'll, that's how we'll move forward. Do we have to work with the city of Murfreesboro on this design? They, not on design it so much, but we have to meet all their codes all and requirements and yeah. regulations, yes. And it has to be properly zoned, which it is already. But all of that will have to come under their review and 
approval as far as any, any like any other normal construction process would uh, have to have to do. Each of the members will have their opportunity, like Sheriff, sure, to tweak it for his unique needs yeah. in this design. And, uh, yeah, and the sheriff will have uh, certainly special more interest in security and how we to transport uh, yeah. inmates and how they are interfaced with the public or not interface and how so all of that uh, gives and they all have different the judges have their own yeah. views about what their judge their courtroom should look like and, and et cetera but we have to have at some point we have to find a way to make all these people have a reasonable understanding of these needs and do it within a budget that's acceptable they'll basically start with a for lack of a better way of putting it, a generic design, and then it'll be addressed for the unique needs of everyone concerned. Yeah, and uh, then you'll come up with the uh, uh, end, in, end product that uh, kind of give us an idea That's of right. what's going on. This, like. this design, it's, we're not talking about a few months. It, it will be more than a year to get, the, a fi get this in final form. It may be as much as a year and a half. It won't be like building a uh, three-bedroom uh, <laughs> single-family dwelling no, sir. <laughs> by no means. <laughs> Probably be something similar to the workhouse. Yeah, and uh, that was a that was a long, drawn-out process, board. and uh, yeah. it uh, came out pretty good. Yeah. We were involved with that uh, I think maybe my previous time. Yeah. A new commissioner was involved in it, and I remember that. Problem with the PDA, uh, yeah. you were involved with it, mm -hmm. I guess, Mike. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean any of you can't have any input oh, you no. want to. We're going to keep you informed, yeah. even though you might not be precise on that committee. This is not anything that's nailed in stone. No. We're, we'll share all this with anybody, and maybe we'll have a few actual just public hearings or discussions yeah, as we go along just to keep everybody informed. Maybe a few extra meetings. Yeah. Richard Smith was a wise choice. They are. Uh, probably the largest engineering and architectural firm in the state with offices all over the southeast uh -huh. and you know depending on what day they have about 140 employees that live in Rutherford County oh. alone so don't think of it as a, right. a Nashville you know yeah. give it to a Nashville company they have a, a lot of investment oh, that's in good. The county. that's good to know Real. Okay, I mean, you, if anything comes to mind any time that you want to know about what we're doing, you feel free to call me, come by, and I may not know, but we, we'll, have, we'll find the answer. May I ask a question? Yes, sir. Um, certainly the design will take a long time, but is the plan to try and go ahead and get a construction company on board to help with design? Yes, there is. Design? Okay. There, I didn't mention that one. It's, they can, we're going to, they're talking about getting a construction manager in place, an at-risk construction manager yeah. in place early into the process so that before we get to the end of the journey with the plans, we want somebody to have already they provided a pretty, yeah. pretty uh, yeah. key set of input as far as the cost. Okay. So we're going to get cost projections out of the architect as we go, and we're going to get cost projections out of the construction manager as we go, and once we get this finalized, they will be the one actually overseeing the construction, but they'll be a part of this whole discovery from the early in the beginning. Did the PBA give you an idea of when they'd like to have the contractual, the contractor part in place? The construction, or you mean? The construction manager or the construction? No, this, they'll start on that soon. I think they're probably in, uh, they may have that by the end of the, even this year. Oh, okay. I mean, it may take them. 30 days to actually get right. the agreement worked out with Gresham Smith. It's and it's then they got to put their RFP out for the construction manager. Right. Right. And that'll take yeah. 30 to 45 days at least, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions on the project? Okay. I just want to see it go forward. <laughs> I don't want to see it. Thank you for working on it 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really do. I want to see it go forward. You know. Very well. It's, it's needed. Uh, I just got one question. Um, once we put this together, this parking garage, is it going to be put in separate uh, ahead of this, this judicial building or is this coming in 
Well, simultaneously. Just to be honest, we don't know. Quite truthfully, it's going to be a part of the total project and the construction manager and the architect's going so to design going to all of that together. Yes, both of them. Now, whether they build the parking garage first, second, or last, I don't know yet until they stage how they want to use this. And there's been some mention of the taking the DNJ buildings down and using that for a staging area. I don't know if this, the construction people are going to have to tell us sort of the timing of what's the best to, to make this work. But it's part of the same total package. Okay. They will evaluate all that and see which step. Yeah, they'll. Yeah, they'll. Yeah. Right. Prior proper planning. Okay. Any more questions? Sir? Not for me. Okay. All right. Next, uh, sheriff office narcotic division okay. space needs. They're all here with us, but I want to say this, and they can. The sheriff is here. I believe you see him even right now. He can come with us up here if he wants yeah, to. come on up here. We know the commission doesn't like surprises, and they like to know what's happening. We're not asking for uh, any amount of money, any approval for money. We just want to let all of you know that we all together agree and think that the narcotics division needs uh, improved space. They have very, very limited space where they are now for office space, storage space, vehicle uh, space, that those that they have recovered, et cetera. All of this, uh, and we don't have a place picked out that we like to, we'd like to help them purchase a building for these needs, okay? We don't know what it's gonna cost. We don't want you to tell us you've got X million dollars to do this. We just want you to know and sort of give us a, a, your consent to allow us to look and evaluate and try to find something we think meets their needs, which they think they know what, how much space they need. It's not an enormous amount of space. It's maybe 7,000 square feet for administrative offices and those things that go together with that part, and maybe another 6,000 square feet for warehouse space, and then they need some space on the outside of the building to store vehicles, et cetera. And all of that needs to be uh, considered so we don't know whether it'll take us a month or a year to find this property, to be honest. But uh, it's hard to find. We, we want to find something we think is reasonable. It needs to be in a fairly secure private location. And we, if and when we are able to bring back a proposal, we might just ask you to take our uh, word for where it is and, just, and we'll describe the project to you and what we're buying, but we may not even give you the address because they need to keep their location as private as possible. So we're not even telling you where it is now, but it's it's not adequate what they have now, and it's not in the, in the best of locations either right now. So all I, I don't even know, Mr. Chairman, if we want to, you just you could pass a motion just giving us consent to evaluate and review and see if we can bring back some potential proposals at some point in the future. We don't know when it is, and we don't know how much it is, so. But we don't want to come in three or four months from now with a deal already done that, that you think we've negotiated without you even knowing we're out there looking. That's all this is. That's all this is about. This will be an offsite location it, from it, somewhere. We're it, currently offsite. It'll be it's, it's offsite. Current. It'll be offsite. Still yeah. offsite. Did this somewhere. come from drug money? That's what we're looking at. Where yeah, we they have, they do have some ability to pay for this. They might not have enough ability to pay for it in one fatal sweep, but over a two or three or four years, they probably could pay for the building out of funds that they recover. Are you looking for just raw land or an existing building that's ready to move in? If, if the perfect, if you had the perfect if world, if we had the perfect world and found the perfect building, then that's okay. what we'd love to do. But, but raw land's not out of the question. Not out of the question. It's. Okay. it's it could be more expensive to build, you know. Well, we got Claude Jones Road here. <laughs> 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 There's not even a sewer on Claude Jones Road. Let's see. Yeah. We, we can have four we actually over some of those <laughs> surplus properties. They've been, they've been over our whole surplus <laughs> list of properties. That they they have drove to, around. And they haven't there. found too much that might work yet. Okay. Yeah. What would you do with the, with the current location? Right. We rent it. They so just go back yeah. to the yeah. building. Okay. Yeah. How many, you said a 7,000 square foot roughly. How many acres do you? 
Well, I think it was more like 13,000. <laughs> See, that's 13,000 square. It was six for the minister. It would be nice to have three or four or five acres at least. You just did vehicles. But, yeah, right. it, it's not a huge place that we need, no. And so what's square, what's square foot building, did you say? Well, I think about 13,000 what they're staying enclosed. Okay, part of that, about half of that's where it would be warehouse okay. space. And the other half, administrative offices. Administrative offices. And we don't, we're not allowed to really even know right now where the current The mayor is. didn't even know where it was. I didn't know, but they, they didn't did show us. So. <laughs> <laughs> I do know where it is now, but it's not necessary, I don't think, and it's probably right. inappropriate to, yeah. Yeah. No. to draw attention to that. I wouldn't want to show the public way. Yeah. 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 So, I don't know, it, it would be good just to put it in the minutes, Mr. Chairman, just as, for this group to, to give consent for us to uh, be allowed to see if we can find something that's suitable and bring the proposal back at some point if we actually are able to discover something that we think might fit those needs. I'll move for consent. Yeah. Got second. a motion, got a second? Second. Oh, we've got a second. Any more discussion? If not, no, we really don't need to call the roll on it. No. Nobody involved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. So you will keep us informed. We'll keep you informed. We hope we're able to come back with something if we, we just don't know when we, it may occur. We've been kind of just looking, going what is even out there mm -hmm. for over a year. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while we found something, that may, but then it doesn't really suit our needs. So, yeah. you know, it, it's, you have to keep looking. Well, let me ask you a silly question. It, can it be Smyrna, Laverne? somewhere else or does it really need to be within it their their people think it needs to be in we, some reasonable yeah. proximity to, to the sheriff's office, the sheriff's office. Okay. they interact so much with the other folks that they don't if they're down in smarter than they got to drive back and forth, i understand you know, i just didn't so. know how much interaction was oh you know, <clears throat> quite a few or quite a bit of interaction yeah. it's okay. just if it was at the jail yeah you have a two bunch of interaction. inmates that yeah. see everything going on yeah mm -hmm. okay. so oh. I, I want to thank, thank you. I want thank to share, I want to thank the sheriff's department for furnishing a trailer and a vehicle for Cannonsburg when we had something out of Cannonsburg for the homeless. A lot of children did not know that come by and see that. Did not know that children come home to an automobile for their home. Wow. And uh, I want to thank you. And the only reason for whole time was day I didn't have time to work on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but it was, it was good. Anytime, anytime we can help, let us know. Yeah. Okay, we got one more. Uh, uh, some of you may remember that uh, Lisa used to present a quarterly report of general capital building program that we have going on in the county. And I don't know, I think each one of you should have a copy of it. And all we do, we, we go over it and we just uh, approve the report that we got a copy of it that we reviewed it. And it's, it's just for information on it. And normally we get it once a quarter. So if you look over it and you got any questions, we'll try to answer your questions along with the mayor here. You got any questions on some of the outstanding capital projects that we still got going on, and some that we finished, and some that we have funds left over from that project? I'll give you a few minutes. One item uh, down here uh, on the subdivision and roads, general fund, it's the last, it's the next to the last item. Uh, the, purchase, the purchasing committee will be opening bids on uh, paving these three subdivision roads right. that uh, defaulted into back to the county. So they'll be opening bids yeah, on that up to Tuesday at 4 30. All, all three of them are going at the same time? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And we're in court trying to get a portion of this refunded, aren't we? Correct. Uh, any progress in court? No, it's been no progress. No. But that's on the Mirrorwood project. We're, we're Just in court the with the bonding company on that one. It'll be a long, drawn-out process if we get it. It's already been too long. Moving slowly. 
any other projects you got any questions about? Is that remaining uh, $381,000 for the also for construction of the parking garage? Or is that just what we had budgeted for the for the land? Okay, see, I told you four, five million. We had a million for the parking garage and four million for the design. So it's already got five million dollars total. We spent six hundred eighteen thousand dollars on the purchase of the uh, land. Okay, so there's, we haven't spent three hundred eighty-one thousand for yeah. all that same. Okay. And it's not it's not designated for anything yet, except it will be folded into a use for demolition or design of the. Etc. for the uh, or construction of anything is left over here in the five million. But just to be clear, the parking garage will cost a whole lot more than the one million that was just oh, allocated yes, for the property just, for the new commissioners. The, pro the parking garage may may end up running six or seven or eight million. Yes, yeah, six or seven million dollars. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's not the full amount we'll need. Yeah. So once we get this design completed and have some reasonable cost estimates before we can actually go forward, we're going to have to get the Commission to agree to commit to funding the actual construction. Okay, so that's that will be maybe a couple years down the road, but we're going to have to step up at some point, and we know what the real dollars are. That property's been up there uh, when I was on property management committee before. Uh, acquired it through him domain that's been laying up there eight years and something needs to be done with it. And right, but legally you can get access to their property about a year and a year and a half ago dragging it through court. On, uh, can, Mr. Mayor, can you tell me a little bit about the very last item on page two, which is the uh, city-county joint venture on Joe B. Jackson and John okay. Rice. What, what's going on there? With those? We're, we're, we're partnering with the city of Murfreesboro on that project. Okay, and of course they're managing the project. And let's see, and there have been change orders. Mm -hmm. And of course this, when they first initially did this, four million dollars is what we thought our park's going to be. It's going to be a bit in excess of that. We haven't spent all that money yet, but we're committed on more than that. We're going to have to have some more money uh, available from uh, some source to accommodate that. But that. I don't. I can't tell you this minute what the actual uh, change orders have been, but um, it'll push us. You can see the contracts. Like our piece, that Lisa has down here, it appears our half of it is 4.8 million dollars right now. Okay. Sure. Any idea on what the timing of that is? I know that project's been in the works it's for a there, while. They're really they're working, working on it. They're well underway right now. It'll probably be another year or more. I, I haven't been out there, but it's. It's a big could project. fall within this fiscal year or it could be in the next one. Yeah, probably next fiscal year before it actually comes to complete fruition. But you can see they've actually sent us a, a bill for our part for 3.3 .3 million. So another million and a half, which they may, they may draw all that down even this fiscal year, okay? Is John Rice just paving? Sir? Is, is John Rice, is that just a paving project? John Rice. Nothing has happened there. Okay. When we developed that project out there years ago, we agreed that we would improve that road. And we were prepared to improve our half of the road, but the other half of the road is city responsibility. And they wanted us to wait to spend our 250000 it's probably more than that now, before we went forward that project so they could do their side as well. And they've not come forward with wanting to complete all of that through there yet. Okay. When they do, we'll have to step up and do our our side of the road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any more questions? Of course, if you got questions during the week or whatever, you can always call the mayor. Be very helpful in asking your questions on that. Okay. Any other business to come before us? Need a motion to accept. Oh, that's right. Okay, got a motion to accept this report. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any other business to come before us tonight? Thank you for being patient with all my questions. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs>
That's good. That's good. That's good for education. And through this time, uh, is this good meeting time for everybody? Yeah. It, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, 530 would be all right. 530 is great. Okay. We can make it 535. No, we can make it. Do we uh, recycle it? Can you save these old? Uh, we recycle yeah. it. The drop it off in the mayor's office or something. <laughs> <laughs> That'll save a phone call. Yeah. Well, just <laughs> yeah. Even, yeah. We, we do recycle. Container in the uh, inside this. Behind under the stairs. Yeah. Okay. Well, we do recycle. Yes, we do. Yeah. Any more questions? If not, contain a motion to adjourn. So much. Got it. Got it.